in at number 10, we have the prediction of World War III. A lot of mystics have predicted a third world war, including perhaps the most infamous of them all, Nostradamus. Nostradamus was a 16th century French apothecary and seer. He is best known for his book Les Prophéties. The chap is thought to have predicted the Great Fire of London, the rise of Hitler, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, the moon landing, and 9-11. It is also said that he predicted both of the world wars, and wait for it, the Third World War. The Frenchman warned that, and I quote, the big war will start in France and all Europe will be attacked. It will be long and terrifying for everyone, and then finally there'll be peace, but only few will enjoy it. He says World War III will last 27 years. When will it start? 2018, apparently. Great. Oh, and he also warned that there'd be a horrible earthquake and a volcanic eruption this year. We'll get back to that one later. Both more tangible and practical than Nostradamus's warning, we have a well meaning warning warning from ancient Japanese people that has largely been ignored. Coming into number 9, we have the Great Awakening in the Age of Aquarius. On November the 26th, 1977, a scary alien voice interrupted a British TV broadcast at 10 past 5 in the afternoon on ITV. Hijacking the Hannington transmitter, a scary speaker interrupted transmissions for six whole minutes, claiming to be an alien called Virilan from the Intergalactic Association. With a distorted voice, Virilan says that all weapons of mass evil must be removed. He warns humanity that they have a short time to learn and how to live together in peace. The voice implored viewers to remain peaceful so that we could be part of the Great Awakening in the Age of Aquarius. The hijacker was voice only, and later ITV called the hijack a breakthrough in sound. Now, the identity of the hijacker has never been found, but afterwards, tongues were firmly set wagging. A lot of alien conspiracy theorists hailed the interruption as a message from aliens of the future who have mastered the ability to send messages through space-time. Coming into number eight, we have the drunk traveler. Do you know what? I might try this one. In October 2017, police officers in Casper, Wyoming apprehended a drunk who claimed to be a time traveler. This self-confessed time traveler had a message of warning too. Now this warning wasn't beer and liquor never sicker, which is a shame because I think he could have used some advice there. His warning actually said that aliens will arrive in the year 2018 and cause havoc. The drunk man said that he was from the year 2048 and he was able to time travel because, and I quote, aliens filled my body with alcohol. All right then. Coming into number seven, have we been sent a message from the future from a nearby star? Okay, when are we gonna stop naming our star's insane letter combinations? This star is HD164595, which really isn't very catchy. This star is a G-type star 94.35 light years away from Earth. In 2015, we seemingly received a message from something in the vicinity of this star. The signal was only heard once by the Rattan 600 radio in Russia. It was not reported to the rest of the world until 2016. Now, the announcement came as part of the Breakthrough Listen project, which is now scanning the nearest 100 galaxies for transmissions. This star has been of interest to humans because it is in a habitable zone. A lot of theorists are suggesting that the message could be from a future form of humanity or even aliens. Coming into number six, we have Noah. Ah, Noah. What a guy. He made headlines in 2017 when he appeared in several news publications and in an interview with Paranormal Elite. Noah claimed to be from the year 2021, but apparently he'd been to the year 2120. It seems that Noah isn't his real name, it's just a name used to protect his identity. The man said that he was 50, but he'd taken secret drugs to make him younger, so he appears as a 25 year old. Good. Great. In a video for Paranormal Elite, he says his sole objective was to prove that time travel exists. He said that it was invented in 2003, but was only used by top secret organizations. Time travel was then publicly released in 2028. He said that he works for the government in 2021, but unfortunately, he's been fired, meaning he can't get back to his time. He says that flying cars exist in 2021, and people love virtual reality. He also says that in 2021, the US president is still Donald Trump, and that the sky 
sky is red with global warming in Las Vegas in 2120. He also claims that North Korea is a huge threat to the world in 2030. Coming into number five, we have John Titor, who had some worrying words for America. John Titor claimed to be an American military time traveler from 2036, and he wrote on a number of blogs and bulletin boards between 2000 and 2001. He started with the Time Travel Institute forums. John's words were so impactful and garnered so much attention that countless works of literature and music have been inspired by them. His story is long, so I just want to give you the cliff notes. He basically says that the USA breaks up into five smaller constituents as a result of civil war. He also says that humans create a miniature black hole and that World War III would be erupting soon. Although his message very much panicked people 18 years ago, a lot of the things that John said would have happened by now haven't yet happened. He explained at the time of his warnings that the future was changeable and a lot of people think that by spreading his warnings in the first place, he actually created a new timeline of events. Some people were so wrapped up in his narrative, they created the John Titor Foundation. Up next, a lot of people think that our next warning from the future also came from John using a different name. At number four, we have the Y2K bug scare. A lot of people pin down the Y2K scare to a number of faxes received in 1998 by Coast to Coast AM. Basically, a lot of people were concerned that come the year 2000, computers would just break down and all hell would break loose. An anonymous time traveler faxed into the show saying that Y2K is a disaster and that the government had to take control using martial law. The time traveler wrote in by fax, which, yeah, cool, I'm sure we definitely are still faxing in 2034. The time traveler warned that people suffer in the future because they forget their basic survival skills. And you know what? I can kind of see that. As we know, the Y2K bug didn't happen, but some people were super scared. Coming into number three, we have a 2016 computer virus. In December 2016, swathes of people around the world reported a scary computer malfunction that they assumed was a virus. People's internet browsing or Netflix viewing was interrupted by texts from a man who said he was from the future. The text was patchy and mismatched, but eventually, through crowdsourcing, it was pieced together. The full text claimed to be from a man who said that he was a chrono-quantum technician whose work had been banned. He said it was because, and I quote, to prevent me from doing exactly what I'm doing now, at long last sending a warning to our ancestors. He said that humans are taking a path into darkness and it all began in the late 20th century when humans started accepting crimes and absolutely inhumane practices. He claimed all of the last four United States presidents were corrupt and blindsided people into accepting cruelty. Because humans were so stupid as not to realize what the politicians were up to, the hacker from the future claimed that we, your descendants, have lived in squalor, rancor, violence and despair all of our lives for generations. Coming into number two, we have the unrecognizable humans of 2987. Apex TV interviewed this guy in Armenia. Now he said that he was employed by the Soviet in 1987. They wanted to send him and a group of fellow time travelers back in time to the 1600s. The machine that they invented was allegedly called the History Corrector, and it was designed to send people back to correct mistakes made in Russian history. The only problem was, they found they couldn't send people back, only forward. As a result, the man was sent forwards in time by 1,000 years to 2987 using a special watch. He said that in little under a thousand years, people are unrecognizable and almost mechanical. They're covered in devices and strange clothing. He said that people don't move, they levitate and apparate. He said that people are busy and emotionless and unhappy. He said that there are only four countries that exist, the Asian Federation, the Soviet Union, America, and a mysterious country called RA. Good news though, people do travel to Mars and it's supposed to be really lovely in a thousand years, so get me there. Finally, bad news for you guys living in the City of Angels because LA is going to be underwater in the year 5000. I really feel like Busted called it when they said that they'd been to the year 3000 and not much had changed, but they live underwater and then they met a really hot great granddaughter. It was great. It was a good time. Maybe they're the real time travelers here. Seriously though, one time traveler called Edward offered a scary vision of the future. Speaking to our mates at Apex TV, who else? Edward said that he worked on a top secret experiment in 2004, which allowed him to time travel to the future. He said that he arrived at a wooden city floating on the water where he met a man who informed him of the post-apocalyptic 
apocalyptic floods. He ventured into the ocean and saw the old city sitting at the bottom of the ocean bed. He said that the flooding was as a direct result of global warming and that many people had suffered from the loss of coastal city worldwide. He basically confirmed that yes, the polar ice caps do melt and so, so many people drown. Coming in at number 10, we have the apocalypse. The end of the world has been predicted so many times in history and it's hard to take those warnings seriously, like so, so many times. Nonetheless, right now, some Christian conspiracists are predicting that the end of days is coming in 2021. The Bible does actually talk about the end of days and that book dates back thousands of years. The World Bible Society also says that Jesus will return after the end of days in 2021. Apparently this comes from studying the Bible and pinpointing a date for the rapture. Society President Dr. B. Shaw said that seven major signs have already been fulfilled, five major signs are currently being fulfilled, and 15 more major signs are yet to be fulfilled. I don't know, I'm not sold on this one. And on number 9 we have the Tsunami Stones. Some things aren't written in stone, but these ancient warnings were. Still, some people chose to ignore them, leading to thousands of deaths. Japan is amid four tectonic plates, making it extremely vulnerable to natural disaster. Japan has a huge coastline, and when earthquakes happen in the ocean, they generate tsunamis. Hundreds of tsunami stones dot the coast of Japan, dating back over centuries. Now, These stones warn future generations where not to build in case of disaster. One stone reads, High dwellings are the peace and harmony of our descendants. Remember the calamity of our great tsunamis. Do not build any homes below this point. Pretty loud and clear, right? While some of Japan's historic disasters may have gone undocumented, documented, these stones speak volumes as to the devastation they must have caused. Residents of Aniyoshi heeded their ancestors' warnings and never built below the stones. They were fine in the tsunami. Sadly, a lot of developers ignored the ancient warnings around the coast, especially during the social boom years following World War II. Thinking that seawalls and modern tech was enough to save them, many built below the stones. And don't say they didn't warn you, because none of these settlements survived the 2011 tsunami. This the tsunami was totally devastating and it is estimated that over 20,000 people died. Next up, we have a warning from the past and present that will one day very much affect our future. Coming in at number 8, we have the imminent eruption of Yellowstone. Remember what Nostradamus said? Well, think about that when we talk about Yellowstone. The Yellowstone volcano is a super volcano waiting to blow. The information isn't anything new, scientists have been warning people for years. Now, the last time the volcano erupted was 6,400 years ago, roughly 6,400 years after its previous explosion. Notice the pattern there? Honey is due. If and when this supervolcano blows, it will be devastating for almost the entirety of the United States and parts of Canada. The ash would fall as far as Washington DC and Toronto. Salt Lake City, Denver and Casper are total goners. Things wouldn't be looking great in Albuquerque, Kansas City or San Francisco either. Now the volcanic ash would be the main issue, choking people and devastating agriculture whilst polluting water supplies. While we know about the volcano, for some reason, cities keep being developed within the immediate destruction zone. The same thing actually goes for Italy. Remember Pompeii and like the disaster that happened back then? Romans kept on building around Vesuvius. Nostradamus had a few terse words about that too. Coming in at number 7, we have a climate warning from 1847. George Perkins Marsh, a Vermont congressman and America's first environmentalist, predicted the horrors of climate change a long time ago. In mid 19th century language that's slightly turgid to our modern ears, Marsh basically warns that if we keep on burning fossil fuels and messing with natural environments, like with swamp draining and deforestation, we would screw over ourselves in the future. In a speech delivered to the Agricultural Society of Rutland County, Marsh acknowledged the effect human actions was having on the climate across the world. So his observations were way back in 1847, 171 years ago. Things have only accelerated over the past nearly two centuries, with humans burning more fuel and farming more animals and cutting down more trees than ever. Marsh, a revered scholar and writer who studied his whole life and spoke over 20 languages, was largely ignored in his lifetime. Although more and more people are awakening to the perils of climate change, his warning is still not totally heeded today. Around 15,000 scientists have agreed that we are already past the point of no return when it comes to climate change. So sad at number 6, we have the warning of a cockpit catastrophe. A lot of the warnings 
or predictions, as you may consider them to be, came decades or more before the disasters they could avert. But this eerie warning came just two months before 150 people were murdered. Dutch pilot Jan Crocheret, a captain for Emirates Airline, wrote an article for a specialist flight magazine, Pilot and Plane. Now, this article came in early 2015, two months before co-pilot Andreas Lubitz plunged German wings flight 9525 into the French Alps. Jan wrote of the perils of the internal locking cockpit, which were installed as a safety measure following 9-11. Now, the doors are bulletproof and work so that nobody can storm a cockpit and hijack a plane ever. However, in this article, Crocheret speculated that this could be abused by a corrupt co-pilot. He wrote how you never know who you're sitting next to. You never know what they're thinking and what they're feeling. He said that he feared that one day he could go to the toilet and his co-pilot could lock him out of the cockpit. He wrote that there's little choice then but to go to the passengers and sit and wait to see what the future brings. Now, really sadly, this is exactly what happened with the German Wings flight. Lubitz locked Captain Patrick Sonderheim out and convinced him to use the toilet. He couldn't get back in, then he crashed the plane. Coming in at number five, we have the ice sheet collapse. 50 years ago, there was a lot going on in the world. The US and the USSR were embroiled in the Cold War. Also, there was a space race going on, keeping headlines occupied. However, in 1968, American glaciologist John Mercer was studying the ice sheet in Antarctica. He wrote a paper calling the West Antarctic ice sheet vulnerable and unstable, warning that it was melting at, and as a result, sea levels were rising. Ignoring this warning for decades until new studies did conclude the same thing, scientists are now scratching their heads at what they can actually do about it. The ice sheet holds enough water to raise global sea levels by three meters, which when you think about how much water there already is on Earth is a lot. Mercer discussed the rate at which the ice was melting, which has now more than doubled, so the ice is melting faster than ever. As we keep on burning fossil fuels and prioritizing beef production, this temperature of the world is continuing to rise. Yeah, we'd be in trouble if the West Antarctic sheet melted, but if all of the ice caps melted, well, this this is what the United States would look like. There again, we have Europe, Asia, and Australia. As you can see, things aren't looking great. Now, this warning was one of the reasons the Paris Agreement of 2015 was drawn up, which commits the world to limiting warming by just 1.5 to 2 degrees. Now, unfortunately, President Trump wants to withdraw from this agreement. I don't know about you, but losing the world's most famous cities to the ocean is a pretty scary thought, especially when we've been warned about it. Coming into number four, we have asbestos and the death of millions. So what is asbestos? It is a naturally occurring fibrous mineral that is known for its strength and resistance to fire. Sadly, as good as it seems for insulation, inhalation of its fibers causes cancer. Asbestos began being used in homes and businesses in the 20th century, becoming wildly popular. Concern about asbestos emerged in the 1930s, but a 1938 report that proved death by the product was airborne was ignored and then buried. Despite health warnings, it was continually used as insulation up until it was banned in the 1980s. Even now, 125 million people in the world are exposed to asbestos in the workplace. Now, shockingly, up until recently, the only places to fully ban the killer substance were Japan and Europe. Canada only banned it in 2018, and it is still in use in the USA. It is thought that the substance kills between 12,000 to 15,000 Americans each year. And do you know what? The warnings have been there for decades. Coming into number three, we have Europe the wasteland and America the broad. Broken. We can't do a list about scary messages from the past and not include the biggest super creep of them all, Baba Vanga. And actually, this isn't the last time you're gonna hear about her, so keep listening. Baba conked it in 1996, but it's still freaking people out with her scary warnings. And actually, they're starting to come true. Firstly, she predicted the breakup of the Soviet Union, the Chernobyl disaster, and the 9-11 attacks. And she predicted that the 44th president of the United States would be black. So this is what she had to say about Europe and America. Baba V predicted the rise of Vladimir Putin. She predicted that a nuclear war will break out and that Europe will be the hardest hit. She said that the most people will abandon Europe and nuclear fallout will give most inhabitants skin cancer. She also predicted that by 2043, a Muslim caliphate would be established in Rome following years of war. Regarding the United States, she said that the 45th president would be the last ever prez, so things aren't looking great for Trump. She also said that he would divide the North and South and ultimately bring down the country. Thanks 
thanks for that, Babs. You're always a ray of sunshine. All right, next up, we have one of the biggest historical warnings of all time. We have the Nazis at number two. The rise of Adolf Hitler, his manipulation of the National Socialist German Worker Party, his establishment of a dictatorship in the Third Reich is one of the most historically interesting and devastating things to ever happen to humanity. The way Hitler managed to harbor social disquiet as political fuel, brainwash a nation, and enact ethnic cleansing was disgustingly artful and should serve as the biggest warning in social history that evil doesn't always arrive to you dressed as the devil, but often as a confident figure offering a better future. The rise of Adolf Hitler should have taught us to pay very close attention when a human both charms, cheats, and bullies their way to the top, manipulates the media, and singles out a race or religion for persecution. Did we learn our lessons from Hitler's Anschluss of Austria? If so, shouldn't Vladimir Putin's annexation of Crimea be a red light? Should China's one-party state worry us? Should we worry about Trump inviting only preferred news publications to his press conferences? Should we be worried about asking to present our social media passwords to custom officials? And should we be worried about Kim Jong-un? It isn't necessarily the Nazi years that should be the warning to us. It is the years of discontent leading up to the Third Reich that are a particular concern here. A 1997 BBC documentary film series called The Nazis, A Warning from History was released, and honestly, it is such a good watch. Nazis and World War II destroyed a lot, but imagine what a modern day Hitler could do with nuclear weapons. Warning. Warning. Okay, we of course need to end this list with some classic Baba Vags and her warnings that, you know, she's got for the future and the end of the Earth and the universe. That's right, coming into number one, the end of the Earth will come in 2341. Mate, according to Babs, it is literally all to come. From 2033 to 45, the polar ice caps are gonna melt, but then cloning's gonna happen and disease will be cured. But don't celebrate too soon because the US will fight the Muslims in Rome using freezeways. Like, actually, that sounds pretty cool. In 2256, Mars will demand independence, and something terrible will be found in the galaxy as we search for further alien life. We will master time travel in 2304, but sadly, a series of man-made disasters will destroy the Earth once and for all in 2341. Vanga warns that humanity will escape to another solar system, but resources will be scarce, which will lead to more war. She then predicts another dark age in 3815, which ends in 3878, and really, it's all just not numbers now. By the year 4674, humans and aliens will have started breeding with a universal population of 340 billion. Sadly though, the universe party is all over in the year 5079, or so she warns. Bit of a buzzkill, isn't she? Dinosaurs walked the earth for 165 million years, but humans have what, 23,000 years on earth, then 2,000 more in space, and then it's all over. Can these warnings and predictions be changed if we play nice? That's a question on everyone's lips. Coming into number 10, we have an assassination warning from the year 4932. Apex TV, as you'll soon discover, are the gift that keep on giving. They make paranormal videos and are basically a conspiracy theorist wet dream. In December 2017, they published an audio clip purportedly sent in to them by a time traveler from the year 4932. How did the time traveler reach them in the first place? By email, apparently. 30 years ago, we were sending posts, but apparently in 2,900 years time, we're still sending emails. I'm actually just gonna say straight up, we won't be. We're just gonna be communicating with the power of our minds. Anyway, the anonymous time traveler has a warning about the future president, which he says will be enough to get him killed for relaying. He says that the year 4932 is a time and a world that many people listening to would not relate to as ideal, and that time as a traveling journey has destroyed future ambition. He says that humanity no longer seemed to pursue progression. He also claims that years are mysteriously falling off the calendar. He said that when attempting to journey to a future year that they'd previously journeyed upon, our error notes return to the period classification as unavailable. This suggests that the future is changeable, and with that logic, he assumes that the past is too. His message warns of the assassination of a president, Janu Oliver Beck, in July 2084. Janu, by the way, is supposed to be born in September this year, so watch out for that. The time traveler says he must never be elected because he must never be assassinated. Apparently, the president was also a philosopher before taking office, and he managed to prove the existence of a god. The time traveler said if we preserve his philosophy, we will preserve of the future of humanity. He ended the message by saying a number sequence, 16, 8, 4, 4, 8, 4, 
448848. Now this has stumped Apex TV viewers. The video has had over 2.6 million views and none of them know what the weird numbers at the end mean. Coming in at number 9, we have a warning from the Egyptian tombs. The Curse of the Pharaohs. Classic. The Curse of King Tutankhamun's tomb warned people off disturbing it for thousands of years. King Tutankhamun died in 1400 BC and was buried in a chamber in Thebes in Egypt. When his body was buried, the ancient Egyptians wrote a warning, as they did on many any other burial chambers. Fast forward around 2,500 years and Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter's team ignored the warnings and entered King Tut's tomb in February 1923. This is really when the trouble began to start. It seems the curse was very much unleashed despite thousands of years of dormancy. Nine people directly related to the excavation and tomb opening died shortly after the burial chamber was breached. This included the financial backer of the excavation, Lord Carnarvon. Carnivan and two of his relatives. Similar cases of plagues and pestilence followed after opening other Egyptian burial chambers. I guess don't say they didn't warn you, because they did. I'm honestly not too sure if I believe in the curse or not, but I have to say it certainly is a worrying coincidence. Okay, this however I do believe in. We have the Mayan ruins and their stark warning against deforestation at number 8. The Mayan civilization was one of the earliest intelligent empires and certainly rivaled the ancient Greeks, Egyptians and Romans. Between 2000 BC and 250 AD, the Mayans thrived. They had complex societies with farming, elaborate architecture, writing methods, artwork and infrastructure. The problem was, was that the Mayans grew haphazardly and all of a sudden, their booming population of 19 million started to decline and then almost entirely died out. Why? What was left of the Mayans soon ran into the invading Spanish colonies and by this point, they didn't have the manpower to stave them off. The lasting Mayan structures, for example the Chichen Itza in Mexico, serve as a sad warning that civilizations can and will die out. So once again, what happened? There is a lot of evidence to suggest that deforestation and subsequent local climate and drought killed them all off. The Mayans chopped and burned wood at an alarming rate. It seems it took the burning of 20 trees to create just one single square meter of city space. Because cleared land absorbs less solar radiation, less water evaporates from its surface, making clouds and rainfall more scarce. So basically, deforestation added to what was already a time of drought. The lack of forest cover also contributed to erosion and soil depletion, which made farming and harvesting even harder. The Mayans were around longer than we as modern nations have been, and I have to say warning modern humans, warning. If we don't learn from their mistake, perhaps we will have even more elaborate ruins than they did. Deforestation is going to be a problem. Coming in at number 7, we have the dodo extinction. The last dodo died 350 years ago. Long before then, and long after, species have died out, but somehow the dodo has become the poster boy for mass extinction. When the Dutch invaded the island of Mauritius, the bird had been plentiful, but it went extinct within 100 years. Why? Well, the Dutch may have hunted and eaten them, but more likely, ship rats and other animals brought over to the island by the ship ate the dodo eggs and outcompeted the birds for food. Sadly, by the 1660s, the dodos were lost forever. Yes, once again, extinctions do happen naturally over time, but this one was on us. This wasn't the first time human interference of a habitat led to the extinctions. It certainly wasn't going to be the last. It was a warning and we didn't listen, or if we did listen, we didn't care. In the past 500 years, we have been directly responsible for the total extinction of thousands upon thousands of species and the critical endangerment of thousands more. Why does it matter, some of you may say? Well, even if you're totally devoid of compassion, species balance out natural ecosystems and without them, they can collapse. Have you ever heard the answer to the question, what would happen if all the bees died out, for example? If you haven't, I don't know, maybe you want to give it a listen. Coming in at number 6, we have Glacier 511. The world's deadliest avalanche could have been avoided had the Peruvian authorities listened to American scientist David Bainess and Charles Sawyer. These guys noticed that a glacier in the area, Glacier 511, was extremely unstable. When they told authorities in 1962, they were simply thrown in jail. Despite warning the Peruvian government that a glacier would soon cause a deadly avalanche, nobody listened. Just eight years later, 
later, the avalanche came and buried 25,000 people under ice. In total, there were 70,000 casualties. Coming into number 5, we have the warning of antibiotic resistance. Alexander Fleming was given a Nobel Peace Prize for his work utilizing penicillin to create antibiotics and cure serious bacterial illnesses. When accepting his prize in 1945, he warned us of a future where frequent and improper use of antibiotics could lead to superbugs. That warning has been echoed by medics across time, who warn that by not taking the right dosages of medicines, we can allow our bodies to become resistant to the drug. Then, it is possible for us to spread this resistant sickness to others, which is how a very, very dangerous pandemic could start, and we wouldn't then be able to cure it. If a post antibiotic era does come, some estimate by 2050 it could kill more people than cancer. Coming in at number 4, we have the stark warning by Koji Minora about Fukushima. Fukushima is described as the worst nuclear disaster in the world. I actually recently watched an episode of Dark Tourism with David Farrier, who I might, side note, be a little bit in love with, and he was on a nuclear tour and registered some insane off the charts radiation levels, even in the areas of Japan that the Japanese government have deemed safe. What is going on? So the Fukushima disaster happened in 2011 as a result of the tsunami and the Tohoku earthquake. It was entirely preventable if people would listen to not one, but two scary warnings. Koji Minora had read an ancient poem that described an earthquake in the northeast of Japan. On investigating, he found that in the year 869 AD, an earthquake had erupted in the area of Fukushima. This earthquake erupted every thousand years or so, meaning that actually we were overdue and those who built the nuclear plant must have known that, or they absolutely should have done. He warned people, they ignored him. He spent 20 years trying to warn as many people as possible, publishing his works in magazines. Again, his warnings fell on deaf ears. He and the ancient poem were proven correct in 2011, and now parts of Japan are in utter ruin or totally contaminated. Coming into number 3, we have The Simpsons. We have done a whole top 10 list of the ways The Simpsons predicted the future, so I definitely encourage you guys to watch that. Either way, The Simpsons writer Matt Groening has been predicting the future for years. The Simpsons warned us about Siegfried and Roy's tiger attack 10 years in advance. We were warned about faulty voting machines, the NSA spying scandal, the Ebola outbreak, and they even predicted Donald Trump would be president long before he considered running. Lisa says that she inherited debt from her predecessor, Donald Trump. Let's hope that the economy part isn't a warning, just unfortunate non coincidence. Hmm. Coming in at number two, we have the Cold War false warning of 1983. Some of you watching might not know about the night of September the 26th, 1983. A lot of us weren't even alive, but our parents and their parents probably were. Many of them may not have known that their lives were very nearly over. This was the night that the world almost ended. Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov was in charge of the Soviet Union's nuclear missile early warning system and the retaliation. In this early autumn evening, the bright red warning lights in a secret control station flashed. They were flashing to warn of an incoming missile from the United States. In the Cold War, the USA and the Soviet Union had a policy of mutually assured destruction. Now, Petrov kept his cool, unsure if the warning lights were a false alarm, as he only saw what looked like five missiles incoming. He had the sense to suspect that if Americans were going to strike unannounced, they would probably do so with more than five missiles. Rather than pressing his missile release button to fire back at the USA, he simply waited. A dangerous game, sure, but within 15 minutes he realised that this was indeed a false alarm. So many people in charge would have been hot headed and fired back without any hesitation. Had the USSR struck America, a full blown nuclear war would have begun that night, ending life as we know it today. Luckily, Petrov was shrewd and composed, but the incident serves as a warning not to trust computer systems over human judgement. It's also a warning that hot heads with fingers on buttons might just cost us our lives. Not naming any names. Finally, coming into number one, we have George Orwell's 1984 warning of the surveillance state. Orwell wrote 1984 almost 70 years ago in 1949. While his famous literary work was set 35 years into his future,
future. The totalitarian state he envisaged was a hyper reality, a fiction imagined by exaggerating trends he saw in the modernizing world. It turns out that 70 years later, his book may be less fiction than it is a word of warning. Orwell predicted CCTV and hidden cameras, as well as government spying on private conversations, which, if we learned anything from Ed Snowden, is definitely happening. He also predicted that televisions would be used to listen to civilians. Now, these days there is a lot of speculation that our smartphones might be listening to us. John McAfee, maker of antivirus systems, said, If you give me just a small amount of information about yourself, I promise you, within three days I can turn on the camera in your computer at home and watch whatever you're doing. Basically, in short, 70 years ago, George Orwell warned us of the surveillance state. Mm -hmm.